Hi there. Now in this question, what I want you to do is to find the area of the triangle bounded by the lines L1, L2 and L3, where L1 has the equation y equals x plus 2, L2 has the equation 5x plus y minus 26 equals 0, and L3 is the line with gradient minus a half, and it passes through the point on the line L2 with x coordinate 5. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, first of all, what we've got to do is obviously establish the three vertices for our triangle. So I'm going to put down the equation of our lines first of all. We're going to need to solve some simultaneous equations here. We've got line L1 has y equals x plus 2 as its equation. And if we're to try and find the point of intersection between L1 and L2, then we're going to need to solve these two equations simultaneously. Now, I'm going to rearrange L2, make y the subject. So by adding 26 and subtracting 5x from both sides, y would equal 26 minus 5x. So we've got our two equations here, 1 and 2, say. And if we say that the point of intersection between these two has coordinates A, then for A, okay, what I could do is either equate the two equations, say x plus 2 equals 26 minus 5x, and solve for x, or I could, for instance, do equation 1 minus equation 2, because that will eliminate the y's. And if we do that, we're going to get y take away y, which is going to be 0. So we have 0 equals, and then you've got x minus minus 5x, which is 6x. And then you've got 2 minus the 26, which is minus 24. So if I was to add 24 to both sides, it follows then that 6x would equal 24. And then if I divide both sides by 6, we end up with x equaling 24 divided by 6, which is 4. Now I need to get the y coordinate, and I can do this very easily by substituting x equals 4 into either 2 or 1. Obviously equation 1 looks the easier of the two, so I'm going to sub it into 1. And if I do that, we get y equals 4 plus 2, so therefore we end up with y equaling 6. So therefore, the coordinates of a must be 4, 6. Now, at this point, I feel we ought to draw a sketch just to see what's going on. So if we draw up our axes here, OK, we've got the origin. And for the line L1, y equals x plus 2, it's got a gradient of 1 because of the 1x, and it crosses the y-axis at the point 2. So it's going to look something like this, a line with a gradient of 1 then crossing the y-axis at this point here, say 2. So if I label that line then L1, and we've got our point A now on the line with coordinates 4, 6. So I'm going to assume that 4, 6 is this point here, which will label A as having those coordinates 4, 6. Now for the line L2, it passes then through A, and having it in the form y equals mx plus c, m being minus 5, the gradient is minus 5, so it's going to be a negative gradient coming down like this, very steep, it would cross the y-axis at 26, so that would be way up here. So we're going to have a line then looking something like this, I feel. Okay, passing through A, it's going to look like that. That would be L2. Now, we need to find out the equation of the line L3. And to do that, we know that it passes through the point with x-coordinate 5 on the line L2. 
So the point with x coordinate 5 on L2, well, where's it going to be? We need to find its y coordinate. Well, we'll say that that point is B. So if we put down here for B, okay, all I need to do is substitute x equals 5 into the equation for L2. That's in 2. Okay, and that will give me the corresponding y coordinate. So, therefore, what we have is that y will equal 26 minus 5 times 5. 26 minus 25. Well, that's clearly 1. And therefore, it follows that the coordinates of b are going to be x equals 5 and y equals 1. So we can mark that point on here. It's going to be, say, that point there, which will have us be then with coordinates 5, 1. Now we've got the coordinates of b, and we've got the gradient, which is minus a half. We should be able to now go on and find out what the equation then of L3 is. So let's just put down here the equation of L3 and I'm going to use the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. So we've got then y minus y1 which is this coordinate here 1 equals m the gradient which is minus a half and is multiplied by x minus x1, x1 being this coordinate here, 5. Now, I don't want this fraction 2 in here, so I'm going to multiply throughout by 2. So that's going to give me 2y minus 2, and then if I multiply this side by 2, it's just going to leave me with minus 1 times all of the bracket x minus 5. So minus 1 times x is minus x, and minus 1 times minus 5 is plus 5. And if I rearrange this, just make 2y the subject by adding 2 to both sides, I therefore have 2y equals 5 plus 2, which is 7, and then minus the x. I'll call this equation 3. Okay. Now... I want to see where this line now crosses L1. And I'm going to call that point C. So to work out the coordinates of C, we need to do simultaneous equations again between this equation for L3 and the equation for L1, which is up here. And what I could do is I could substitute for y into equation 3, or noticing that by adding the two equations I could eliminate the x's, I'm going to opt for that. Okay, so I'm going to do equation 1 plus equation 3, and that will eliminate the x's. So what we end up with is y plus 2y, which is going to give us 3y. Okay, so therefore we've got 3y equals we've got the x plus the minus x so that cancels and we've got 2 plus the 7 which is going to be 9 so we've got 3y equals 9 and so therefore if i divide both sides by 3 y must equal 9 divided by 3 which is 3 so i've got the y coordinate now for my point c on the line l1 i just need to get the corresponding x coordinate so I could substitute this into either equation 1 or equation 3. I'll sub it into 1. It looks a lot easier. So we'll just put down here sub y equals 3 into equation 1. And if we do that, we're going to get 3. Okay, therefore 3 for y equals x plus 2. Well, clearly from this, if we take 2 from both sides x equals 1. And so that means that therefore the coordinates of c are going to be 1, 3. Okay? 
So if we put that point on here, one cross, three up, let's say that's that point there. So that's the point C with coordinates one, three. Okay. So now that we've got our three coordinates, it's just a case of now finding then the area of this triangle. So I'll just draw that line in L3, passing through those points there. Okay, so it's L3. So how are we going to find the area of this triangle now that we have the three coordinates? Well, the quickest way of doing something like this is to construct a rectangle through these points, parallel to the y-axis and the x-axis. Something like this. So if we were to draw a line through A, parallel to the x-axis, it's going to look something like that. We'll come down through here, down to B, and then we'll go across from B, directly below C, and then we'll complete that like so, through there. Okay? So all I'm going to do now is work out what the area of each of these triangle sections are. Okay, they're going to be very easy to work out. And take the area of these three triangles away from the area of the rectangle, and that will give me the area of the triangle. So we need the lengths of the sides of our rectangle. Well, the side here, okay, which obviously is going to be the same as the top here, is going to go from C to B. That is, its x coordinate is 1 here, going to an x coordinate of 5. So therefore, that makes this length across here 4 units. Okay, so we'll just mark that in as 4. As for the height of the rectangle, that's going from B to A, the y coordinate going from 1 to 6. So the height is going to be 5 units. So when it comes to the area of the triangle, we can say that therefore area of triangle ABC Okay, well that's going to equal then the area of the rectangle. So the other rectangle is going to be 4 times 5, okay, which we know is 20. I'll work that out in a minute though. And then from this we're going to subtract the area of each of these triangles. Let's start with this one up here first of all. We'll mark in its length across here. That's going from x equals 1 to x equals 4 at A. So that's going to be a difference of 3 units there. And for this distance here, it's already 3 units up from the x-axis, going up to 6 units. So this is going to be 3 units from here to here. So the area of this triangle is going to be the base times the height divided by 2. It doesn't matter which two of these you take as the base or the height. It's still going to be 3 times 3, OK, divided by 2. OK, that's the area of that triangle. Now we'll look at this triangle over here. We can see that this distance is 5. The distance across has got to be 1 unit because the whole length is 4 units. So that's going to be 1 unit in there. OK, I hope you can see that. So when it comes to the area of the triangle, we just take away the base, say 1, times the height, 5, divided by 2. And we've got one more triangle to work out, this one in here. And we've already got, say, the base of the triangle. We just need the height. Well, this was 3 units. The total length here was 5 units. So that's going to leave us with 2 units there. So for the area of this triangle, it's just going to be 4 times 2 divided by 2. 4 times 2 divided by 2. So if you work these values out, you've got 20 here, minus 9 over 2, minus 5 over 2, minus 4. And that comes to a total of 9. 9 square units. OK, for the area. So I hope you've been able to get that right. And uh, if not, I hope you've been able to see how to do it.